might not know, Noddy, that five years ago you were diagnosed with esophageal cancer. I was. It's something that we're going to talk with Dr Zand about a little later on in the show. Obviously, difficult time of year for a lot of people dealing with cancer. We're going to talk about things to look out for, how they can cope later in the show, about 15 minutes. Before we get into that, though, we cannot move on any further without addressing the song that everybody knows the words to. Which, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do, you, do people... We, as soon as you came in, we started humming it, we started singing it, we started talking about it. Do you get that as well? I do. I get people... Well, every day of the week, uh, if I'm out and about shopping, somebody will shout, it's Christmas at me. <laughs> in December, it's probably 30, 40, 50 times a day. Yeah. And they all think it's the first time anybody <laughs> shouted it at me. <laughs> but it's become my catchphrase, so I can't knock it now, can I? And it's been happening for, what, 50 years? 50 50th years. Anniversary, yeah. A beautiful song, beautifully sung. Yeah. But testament to how relevant it still is, is that they've recut a new video. So it's the archive footage of you singing it originally on Top of the Pops, but they've put it together for a new version of video. That, I mean, that must be a joy to see. Yeah. I mean, it, th these are two clips uh, from 1973, and uh, they've, they've mishmashed the two together, as record companies do these days. There's actually a little bit in the video as well where I end up with a custard pie in my face. <laughs> and that happened on the Christmas Day Top of the Pops in 73, because we beat Roy Wood's Wizard to the number yeah. one spot. And Elton John. And Elton John. And they were on the show also, and they custard pied me because we'd got <laughs> the number one and not them. And it's it. in that vi new video. Hey, Noddy, what are you like at crafty in general? Christmas. I'm not very good. I I'm hopeless uh, at anything don't crafty. You worry. Give, give me five minutes with your Noddy. And I'll, I'll have you, Mr Number One. I'll tell you what I used to do. I used to mend, cos we didn't have uh, wardrobe ladies in our day on the road, but I used to mend my own stage clothes on the road on tour. <laughs> well, that's See, quite so crafty. You, know, you yeah. get the skills. So, so and, tell, us, tell him what we're doing today. Right, Noddy, I'm going to teach you... We're going to be doing Christmas candles. OK. So you can do something like this. Believe it or not, it's just a regular candle, 50p. We're just... Christmassifying it a little bit more. Okay. Uh, and we're going to be doing a bit of napkin folding because we're going to tablescape this whole table for Christmas. I texted all my friends and said, look, here's a selfie of me with Noddy Holder. They were like, oh, my word, are you singing with Noddy? <laughs> I said, no, I'm crafting with him. Okay. Even better. I'm willing to learn. I'm awesome. sitting between you <laughs> and, and the person that did the wardrobe for Noddy Holder. <laughs> Who is Noddy Holder? <laughs> How am I? I've got a, OK, I'm going to get on this. You, I'm going to blow you away. You'll be impressed. Listen, Noddy, you bring so much joy. Sarah, you've got a crafting masterclass. Zand, you are here <laughs> with, your, with your wisdom. <laughs> with your wisdom. We love you, you know that. Also here... It's not bad for Zand. Um, you're here with Noddy. We were chatting to Noddy earlier about um, uh, the cancer of the esophagus that we were diagnosed with back in 2018. How, what, what happened? How did, you know, how, did it all, how did it come about for you? Well, um, I went for my normal six monthly checkups, as you do after at my age, and uh, they checked my bloods and they found I'd got a real iron deficiency. And my GP said, I'm a bit concerned with this. And I said, send you to the hospital. So I went to the hospital, went for a scan, and they found the cancer in the esophagus. It's not throat cancer. A lot of people think it's throat cancer. It's not. It's nothing to do with throat cancer. And uh, the diagnosis originally was they gave me six months to live. Wow. And so they sent me to the Christie Hospital in Manchester and uh, they had a new treatment there, which was a high-powered treatment, chemotherapy treatment. And they said, we'd never given this particular treatment. It's targeted treatment. It's the tumour. They said, we'd never given it anybody over 60. I was 72 at the time. And they said, are you willing to try it out and see if it works on somebody your age? And I'm the sort of guy who had a pretty positive outlook. And they said, that does work in my favour, that I had a positive outlook with it. And I said, well, what choice have I got? Six months, I'll try this treatment. Mm. And I tried the treatment and touch wood. Five years on, I'm still standing. That's great. Absolutely. In the words of Elton John. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, we'll talk about the symptoms maybe in, in a second, because I know you had different kind of symptoms, uh, Noddy. But um, Noddy's saying it's not, it's not throat cancer then. 
It's, so the esophagus is not a very famous part of the body, but it's your food tube. It goes from the back of your mouth uh, right down to your stomach. You can see it here. So what's difficult about it is it's buried deep in your chest, between your lungs, behind your heart, goes through your diaphragm into your stomach. And so um, when you get symptoms, they're related to a blockage of the food tube very often. But Noddy's talking about anemia, so often a tumour can bleed, so you might be losing a bit of blood, but you wouldn't, wouldn't notice that. It's, yeah. it's inside you. Difficulty swallowing um, is very common um, because the food tube gets blocked. But by that point, the, the cancer may progress quite fast. So feeling or being sick, um, having heartburn or acid reflux, um, because that's the a big one. and that's that's a really big one. A cough that isn't getting better, or a hoarse voice, and a loss of appetite or losing weight unexpectedly. Um, that's a kind of pretty good range of symptoms. Interesting yeah. talking about swallowing it because you said you were struggling to swallow just a piece of bread at one point. Well, it was the you know, the thick, crusty bread I couldn't swallow. Yeah. But I took all these things on at my age, that it was old age creeping up. I was anemic, I was losing weight a little bit, but I was trying to lose weight. I'd laid off the chocolates and the booze and stuff like that because, you know, you have to control your cholesterol and your blood sugars and all the rest. So I thought it was just an old age thing creeping up on me. But I was getting a lot of heartburn particularly after strong curries and mm. foods like that. Uh, and I also thought that was normal. So it wasn't until I was diagnosed I realised these are all symptoms of the esophagus cancer. You, you, um, mean, you mentioned the symptoms, but what about are some people more at risk than others? Yeah, th th they are. And so, so if you're thinking about your, your risk for this, it's not a common cancer, but it's not very rare. It's about the 14th most common in the UK. Um, age is a risk factor. We've got a graphic here showing them. So older age, being a man, puts you at slightly higher risk. Acid reflux is the big one. If you regularly get heartburn, that can irritate your esophagus and cause a problem called Barrett's esophagus. Being overweight, um, smoking and drinking are also heavily associated with that. So looking at that list of risk factors, I think lots of people will recognise of themselves or a family member. And as Noddy's brilliantly said, you know, this is not a cancer that pe people are aware of. Often you only catch it once your food pipe is almost completely blocked. So if you've got those risk factors, that can be managed. If you have this thing called Barrett's esophagus, where your esophagus is sort of precancerous, there's lots that can be done. So if you have that picture of maybe a bit of smoking, a bit of booze, bit of heartburn, um, you're an older man, go and have a chat with your GP and say I'm worried about it. So five years ago you were given six months to live, mm. but not only are you still standing, you're shining. How is the treatment going? <laughs> Sweet talker. <laughs> um, well, it's great because uh, it's enabled me to do things and look at life a bit differently. Uh, I went back on stage this year with a band, not with Slade, but uh, an eight-piece boogie jazz band. So I was singing a few tunes and telling a few naughty stories on stage with them. And uh, I thought... I've had a new lease of life from it that I've survived those five years. And uh, I thought I'd give the audience a bit of pleasure again on stage, which I haven't done for a very long time. And I was in good voice, but I've, I've had to learn to sing differently uh, because although it wasn't throat cancer, it affects your breathing because it's down here in the tubes. And I had a very strong voice. And I, I've had to learn to breathe differently. Interesting. Uh, to get the notes and whatever. Uh, the sound of the voice is the same, but the breathing is different. Because I'm, I'm a rock and roll singer. I sing from there, not from the diaphragm like proper singers do. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Nadia, I've got no doubt there'll be a lot of people watching this who are sort of loving your positive attitude. It's so good to have you on the show. I think that's a good yeah. thing to have. Yeah. It's a, yeah. I think it was a main thing in my favour. My consultants told me so. Right. And I, anybody who's going through cancer, it is terrible. It is absolutely terrible. But your mindset is an important way of getting through it if possible. Positive, positive, positive. Well said. Well, thanks for sharing that attitude. If you are. Top of the show. Noddy Holder, the legend of Christmas, said he wanted to have a go at crafting. No, no come on, Noddy, get in here. You can have a go at this. Come we're on. with uh, crafting queen, Sarah Davis. You said you were going to show uh, Noddy. Tell us what we're making. It's based on, like, something we've seen on Instagram, isn't it? Called Table... 
table scaping, basically table making scaping. your Christmas table look all fancy, right? right? And I'm trying to do it on a budget. So these are really inexpensive. They're about 50p to pick up the little candles like this. But look how great it looks when we've added some extra colour. All you need is a bit of other wax. Helen, you'll have a load of wax at home. Oh, half the, cra the crayon crayons. Box. Yeah, there's right. a load of half crayons. They're getting new, potentially, off Santa, maybe. There you go. Recycle the old ones. Recycle, Recycle the old Recycle good. So what I want is a few shavings. Because we're going to make it look like comfort. Look, he's ready. <laughs> right, Noddy, Noddy, you're just going to shave it a little bit with your... Shave can you say with the If I shave cut it a little my fingers, bit. you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> now, thankfully, we've just given you a little uh, kitchen knife, so you'll be fine. So can you see, a couple of little shavings on here. Now, I'm going with the, the gold. Yeah. You're doing a bit of green. Gets doing us a bit of red. Should we do, like, a multicoloured one? So, presumably, if you're... Because I keep thinking manscaping, but that's what it's from, isn't it? Ta tablescaping. <laughs> yes, tablescaping. Yeah. So, you're, you're tablescaping... <laughs> right, bring, them, bring one of them over here. If you've got a, a colour theme... Kind of weather, Noddy. Yes. You could do it to tie in with your theme, couldn't you? Exactly that. So, all you're going to do is you're going to... You know, if you're going turquoise or purple this year, that is... That is a a lovely confetti explosion there, Gethin. Right? What I've done is I've started getting the candle ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to melt the wax a little bit so that we've got warm mm -hmm. wax that we're then going to melt the candle into. Now, at home, I would do it with a hairdryer, Helen. But just because it's a little bit noisy on the show, I'm using what's called a heat gun, which some of you, but those of you that are into crafting might have one of these, but a hairdryer does exactly the same. And then once you've got your candle a little bit, little bit warm, we're just going to roll it in the confetti. Can you see, nice. Nadia, you're going to be having a go at this when you get home. Are you a crafter? No, I'm not a crafter. Not no, yet. No. You, are you will be when I well, finish with you, Nadia. This Look is what this. I'm looking forward to. So, now, if I want them to stick into there, watch what I'm going to do. Take a little bit of greaseproof paper, and then all I'm doing is I'm going to wrap this in the greaseproof paper, so I'm going to get it all together. Shall I move that? <laughs> the Glamorous. Way? You can clear that away from me. If it ever doesn't work out as a TV presenter, you're absolutely brilliant with <laughs> a cool. backstage hand, right? <laughs> so, and then once it's all wrapped up in that, I can heat it a bit more. And what this does is it maintains the shape. OK. So if you do have a go at this and you find that your little bits are always, you know, f falling off, you don't want the shavings to come off, all you're doing is you're going to warm this up again and even roll it between your hands like this. So now I've got the wax all nice and melted okay. so that when I take this out, We've got this perfect Christmas candle with all of the wax melted in. How fabulous Oh, is wow. That? Yeah? Ooh, That'll really elevate your table. It will indeed. But no table is complete without fancy napkins. Ah. How is your origami? No. Ooh, pardon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're going to do a bit of napkin origami. Napkin origami, <laughs> right? So, all you're going to do, we're going to take our napkin yeah. and I want you to fold the napkin in half, right? So, you're going to fold all the pieces together and then you're going to fold it in half again so that it's folded into four, right? Then lie it in front of you with all these open bits at the top. Right, so we nicely fold it into four with the open bits at the top. Then we're going to take this, fold it down to about maybe an inch off the bottom, right? Give it a crease. And I'm going to go down with the next one. Ah. So what we're doing is we're kind of like waterfalling ah. all of these little bits. I mean, the sound effects that are coming out, you know, you're giving <laughs> me a lot of promise here. That's you, it. You know what you're doing Christmas morning now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've got all that folded. Yeah. Then what I want you to do is take and flip it over, right? So flip it straight over like this so we've got, like, a, the point at the top still. Now, top tip here. Put your finger right in the middle at the bottom. And you're going to fold this over the point, like, like this, so the point's going to go roughly to halfway across here, yeah. but you're holding your finger in the middle, Get right? Yeah, yeah. And you're just going to fold the other piece over, Ooh, like this, so that we've folded it into a point. And what happens is when we flip this back over, it's starting to uh -oh. resemble a little bit... So that's how it's going to look at the moment, resembling a bit of a Christmas tree. More like a bush, yours. <laughs> It, it, Mine's an off-centre bush. Nice. No, you didn't do the rehearsal, so that's not bad <laughs> for a first attempt. And the last thing you do is just fold all of these bits under like this. And you can see that's oh, how you get that Christmas tree shape. The last little bit just folds over. There's your Christmas tree shape. And to finish it off perfectly, <laughs> you're just going... I'm going to give you a little cinnamon stick each. 
Your cinnamon sticks, just a glamorous assistant. There we go. I'm hey, fine to rub it. Yes, I have to say, I know we've been working on the crafting now for two or three years. I think this is the best piece you've ever done. <laughs> I think this is your Thanks best one you've ever done. This is tricky. Me. Come on, let's Come on. take them over let's to bring, the table. Bring them with. Don't lose their grip. <laughs> bring them with. Are we going to have points deducted Noddy. for uh, off centre? Um, don't worry. Noddy, I'm going to get you a copy of my crafting book <laughs> and the step-by-step -step instructions <laughs> you can keep practising. Um, I'm going to put it on the plate there. You get, you get over there, Noddy. Oh, well done. What a oh, oh, Christmas dinner we would have. The perfect finish. Oh, I see. I've got a little one. Right, have a great Christmas. We'll see you in the new year. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, what a lovely Christmas. What a Perfect. gang we have. I mean, that is what a setting. The Decorous, candles. And these are free. You yeah. can just find one and do it. It's brilliant. Use any napkins that you've got at home. Any comments? Ready? And we're going to go. One, oh. two, amazing <laughs> sun. <laughs> Beautiful. And let's go into our stretch. And nice stretch to one side. Beautiful. And to the other side. Good. Feel the stretch. Lean into it. Good. Beautiful. Last one. Ready? And side. I mean, this is like side. Good. Study hold the dance into this. It's hard like surreal. This is it first. <laughs> Last one. And arms up. And knees up. Knees up. Good. Up. And up. Two more. One. Good. Is and about two. It. And we stretch. Noddy. Stretch. Before we say goodbye, any messages? Merry Christmas, everybody! <laughs> See you tomorrow at 9.15. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>